Bibles. We're going to go right to the Word. Come on. Amen. God is good. Yes, He is. I said, God is good. Yes, He is. All the time. And all the time. God is good. God is good. I brought my personal Bible. But the print is too small to preach from. I need. Praise Amen. God. Hallelujah. Turn with me to the book of Esther. Speak, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. God, we worship you. We magnify your name. We glorify your name, God. You are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Lord, there's none like you. Hallelujah. I will not be silent. I will always worship you. Hallelujah. I will give you the glory. I will give you the honor. I will give you the praise, oh God. Hallelujah. Because you are worthy, God. You are worthy, Lord. Hallelujah. As long as I have breath in my lungs, I will praise you. As long as I have breath in my body, I will glorify you. Hallelujah. I glorify your name, oh God. I worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is worthy. Amen. Turn with us to the book of Esther chapter 4. Amen. We thank God for his presence in this house. We thank God for each and every one of you who press your way out. We thank God for those who are viewing by way of Facebook or YouTube. Amen. Hallelujah. God is worthy to be praised. Amen. Hallelujah. Esther chapter 4. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We praise you, God. We worship you. Amen. God is so good. I woke up with a praise. Because I woke up. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hey, Lord. Amen. I love that. I will always worship you. Amen. You Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Everybody standing. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I do have a little bit of scripture that I want to uh, that I want to uh, read. Amen. But I'm just going to go on and do what God told me to do. We'll start from Esther chapter 4, uh, verse. Let's go with Esther chapter 4. We're going to start with verse 12. Uh, I believe verse, I want to start a little bit before 12. So let's go with verse 11. Then we're going to go over to Esther chapter Eight, amen. amen. Esther chapter four, verse eleven, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces do know that whosoever, whether man or God, shall come unto the king and to the inner court who is not called, there is one law of his. To put him to death, except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter, that he may live. But I have not been called to come in unto the king these thirty days. And they told to Mordecai Esther's words. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou in thy father's house shalt be destroyed, and who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. Go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan and fast ye for me and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise, 
And so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. Let's go over to chapter 8 really quickly. Amen. Verse 14. Amen. Amen. Chapter 8, verse 14. Are you there? Amen. Amen. So the post. Uh, presence of the king. Okay, chapter verse 15, verse 15. And Mordecai went out from the presence of the king in royal apparel of blue and white and with a great crown of gold and with a garment of fine linen and purple and the city of Shushan rejoiced and was glad. The Jews had light and gladness and joy and honor. And in every provision, in every province, and in every city, whithersoever the kings commanded and his decree came, the Jews had joy and gladness, a feast and a good day. And many of the people of the land became Jews, for the fear of the Jews was upon them. Chapter 9. Now in the twelfth month, that is the month I dare, on the thirteenth day of the same, when the king's commandment and his decree drew near to be put in execution, in the city that the enemies of the Jews hoped to have power over them, though it was turned to the contrary, that the Jews had rule over them that hated them. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father God, we praise your name. We worship you. We magnify your name, O oh God. You are worthy to be praised. Lord, we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise just because of who you are. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace, O oh God. We thank you for your hand upon our lives. We thank you, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For all that you're doing in our lives, O oh God. Lord, we thank you for new creation, Christian ministries, and all who are gathered, O oh God. We thank you for the church at large, O oh God, the ecclesia, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, and we praise you, God. And we ask, Father God, that you will speak to us, O oh God. Use me, your weapon servant, for your glory, O oh God, to speak your word to your people as you have given it unto me, O oh God. Hallelujah. Save souls, change lives, open the eyes of the blind, set the captives free, O oh God. Hallelujah. O oh God, hallelujah. Encourage the discouraged on today, God. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Holy Spirit, move through this sanctuary. Move throughout this word, O oh God. In glory, hallelujah. And at the end of this time, God, we have to end as you hatch your way in the service, O oh God. As we gather and get ready to assemble to go back to our respective homes, oh God. As we fight, God, get ready to do what we're going to do this upcoming week, oh God. We will be ever so certain, oh God, to do it with joy and to give you and you only the glory, the honor, and the praise. And it's in the master's name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, that we pray and let the church say amen. Amen. And praise God. Put your hands together and bless the Lord on the day. God is good and worthy to be praised. Good to see everybody. Hallelujah. As you take your seat, just tell somebody, I am positioned for impact. Positioned for impact. I am positioned for impact. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And even in the midst of everything that's going on on today, amen, uh, God gave me this word, amen, to bring to you on today to let you know that you, my brothers and my sisters in Christ, are positioned for impact. Hallelujah. You know, we look around at the things of this world. Jesus said it himself. He said, in this world you will have trouble. He said, but take heart because I have overcome the world. Hallelujah. In this world, we will have some trouble. Anybody had some trouble on this past week? Uh, anybody has some trouble that you're facing some things even in this upcoming week? Amen. Hallelujah. 
And God is saying that this is the time for us as the church not to be distracted. Amen. Hallelujah. To know that we are the ecclesia. We are the called out ones. Uh, we have the power of the Holy Ghost on the inside of us. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus told the disciples, he said, you want to run into some stuff, but I want you to know that I have given you power over all of the power of the enemy. Hallelujah. So we thank God that we operate and we flow in power. And God is saying unto us on today that it's time to assume our rightful position. It's time to assume our position of power. It's time to assume our position of authority. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. And I thank God that, 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 that in all that, 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 that we uh, go through in life, that Jesus, hallelujah, continues to be our strength. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me power. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Amen. Hallelujah. So, 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 I thank God, amen, hallelujah, for the things uh, like the scripture. Amen. I thank God for the scripture. I thank God for the text. I dreamed about this text. I dreamed about the book of Esther on last week. All right. I dreamed about the book of Esther on last week. I woke up, I was woke up and I was so, so perplexed about this dream that I had had. Uh, Carmen. Uh, I, I was at this church and it was a big church. And, and I was at this church and I was getting ready to preach. And as I stood up to open the Bible, I could not find the scripture. So I'm standing there, and I've been preaching for over 15, about 15 years now. And, and I opened up the Bible, and I could not find the text. I knew I was supposed to preach from Esther. And I'm at this conference, and I'm preaching, and getting ready to preach, and, and I opened up the Bible, and I could not find my text. And then when I found the book of Esther, amen, I could not make sense out of what I was reading. And I know a lot of times we open up the Bible, we cannot make sense out of what we're reading. And as I'm reading it, I'm like, God, this makes no sense, amen. And I'm reading it, and in between the reading, I saw a lot of notes and graphs and things that seem to be irrelevant to the text at the time, amen. And I'm, I'm reading in between the text, amen. And, I, and as I looked up, people were leaving the church, amen, hallelujah. It was like people were just getting up and walking out in the middle of me preaching the word, amen, hallelujah. And I, I woke up from that dream and I wrote the dream down in my notebook and, and then God began to show me, and even as I'm telling you, God is telling me that there's an attack coming against the word, amen, hallelujah. God is saying there's an attack coming against the clarity of the word. And even as I was getting ready to come to church today, God reminded me of the fact that we are in the year 2020. Hallelujah. And he put my mind on rewind and he said on January the 1st of 2020, preachers were standing up in pulpits across the nation and they were saying this is the year of breakthrough. This is the year of blessing. This is the year of overflow. This is the year of believing and receiving. This is of miracles. This is the year of the open mouth. Come on, preachers. Come on, people of God. We know that we heard all of these declarations across the land, across America, America, about what season we were entering into. God is saying, don't be distracted. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. 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 And I even remember the word that was declared, my brother, in this house. Amen. Hallelujah. That Pastor Emily stood up and said that this is the year of believing and receiving. Hallelujah. And that God showed me in 2 Chronicles 2020. 2 Chronicles 2020 it says, believe in the Lord and you will be established. Believe my prophets and you shall prosper. Uh-huh. 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 And we stood flat-footed and we boldly declared the word of God. Hallelujah. Morning and as I'm preparing, you know, because I'm up late, I'm out of the bed, I, I'm up late, amen. And then I get my eight hours, I get my eight hours. I'm in full time ministry, and I'm a business woman, I own my own publishing company, so I can work my own hours. Uh, but as I'm up and, and God is showing me uh, uh, this thing about the coronavirus, amen, hallelujah. And I opened up Facebook and I heard a prophet. That we need to stop saying coronavirus. 
amen, hallelujah, because corona means crown. Uh -huh. uh, so corona means crown, amen, hallelujah. So here we, here we have a virus that's trying to be king in our lives. Oh, y'all got to hear God on today, amen, hallelujah. Here we have a virus that's trying to take over and have dominion and authority in the lives of the people of God. Hallelujah. But we have to be like Haman. I read from the book of Esther. Now it's coming back to me why God gave me this dream about Esther. Uh, I'm like, why am I dreaming about Esther? I know it's woman's month, but when I stood to begin to preach, there was no word, no utterance coming out of my mouth. Uh, uh, and God brought me back and showed me Esther, and he showed me Mordecai. Uh, and the reason that the uh, threat the Jews were threatened with death was because Mordecai refused to bow. Uh, oh, y'all got to hear God about today. Uh, Mordecai refused to bow. And in the same way, you and I have to refuse to bow. Uh, somebody got to say, I'm not about to bow now. Uh, to go fire in this time to be king in my life. Uh, I said, somebody needs to say, I'm not a virus that's trying to be king in my life. Oh, come on and give God some praise right there, right there. So I'm looking at the book of Esther and I'm looking and now God has shown me the word and he's shown me that there's confusion trying to come against his word and he's showing me that the enemy, hallelujah, is sending a threat to the people of God. Uh -huh. And Jay, uh, on this week I was supposed to do a speech for Toastmasters uh, because I'm a Toastmaster, amen, hallelujah. Pastor and I joined Toastmasters about uh, 14 years ago before we became preachers because we wanted to be motivational speakers. Uh, and we went to Toastmasters to improve our speaking skills. Uh, and about uh, uh, before the beginning of the year, God sent me back to Toastmasters uh, because I said that I knew that God was sending me beyond the walls of the church, amen, and that God was going to allow me to speak out in, in the marketplace. Uh, uh, so, so as a matter of fact, I'm in a contest right now. I'm getting ready to be world speaker, world champion of Toastmasters International. I'm about to speak in Paris, y'all. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm declaring and decreeing it. It hasn't happened yet. I have about three more speeches to compete before I actually get to that stage in Paris. Come on, somebody. I'm talking about do you have a dream? I'm talking about do you have a goal? I'm talking about don't be distracted. Are you positioned for impact? Come on, y'all. In the name of Jesus. Because although I'm at Toastmasters making a speech, I'm there for impact. Come on. Somebody say I'm positioned for impact. Wherever I go, I'm positioned for impact. Whatever I do, I'm positioned Praise God. for impact. So, so, so I'm preparing my speech, and this particular speech topic, uh, I'm, I'm doing presentation mastery, and for this particular speech topic, uh, I'm supposed to research a topic, and I don't like researching. If you know me, I, I just, well, I study the Bible to show myself approved, but I want to get up and open my mouth and speak. <laughs> if it's not the Bible, I don't really want to do a lot of research, amen. But it's amazing because as I, I, I'm like, God, everything works together. Somebody say everything works together. Everything works together. As I'm doing my study and researching for the speech that I was going to give on Thursday, I, I'm researching on Wednesday to give a speech on Thursday, and, and this is God. His name is Travis Brad, Bradbury. Travis Bradbury, who's the author of Emotional Intelligence 2.0, wrote an article in Forbes magazine, and guess what he said, y'all? He said that we human beings are wired, our brains are wired to look for and focus on threats. Oh, y'all got to hear God. You got to hear God. The enemy is coming against your natural mind. Amen. Hallelujah. He said we're, our brains are wired to look for and focus on threats. He said that worked well for us eons ago when we were hunters and gatherers. He said, but now it only works to create pessimism and negativity. Oh, no, my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now it only works to create pessimism and a negativity that can wreak havoc in your life. And I'm quoting Bradbury here. 
Huh? Hallelujah. And then he went on to quote, Hallelujah, Martin Seligman from the University of Pennsylvania. And Seligman says that, that pessimism and negativity are bad for your health. They create depression. They lead to a higher rate of acceleration in your health as you, in the decline of your health as you age. Hallelujah. And they have a negative impact on productivity. Oh, church, you got to hear what God is saying on today. This is a distraction. This is a ploy to get you off of your game. Uh, this is a ploy to get you to put your natural mind on natural things. Uh, and God says, I need you to shift back uh, into your position of impact. Jesus. Come on and give God some praise. Hallelujah. They canceled the meeting. The Civic Center in Bloomfield, where we have our meetings, was closed because of this virus that's going around. So they canceled our meeting. So I wasn't able to dismiss that information. But I realized now that God wanted me to share with the church to let you know, hallelujah, that, 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 that we lean onto the carnal things. To be carnally minded is death, uh, but to be spiritually minded is life. Oh, come on, somebody needs to hear God on today. As I keep my mind stayed on Jesus, uh, the Bible says that he'll keep me in perfect peace. Uh, hallelujah. So I don't have to have uh, uh, 10, 10 wins on my radio in the car. Uh, I don't need to have the news on because I already know what's going on. I know what's going on in the land. Hallelujah. So I just need to make sure that I'm getting that word in. Come on. You need to make sure that you are reading your word. Hallelujah. You need to make sure. Because after all, whose report are you going to believe? As in whose report will you believe? At the end of the day, who's speaking loud, louder in your ear? Amen. Amen. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so, Hammond, hallelujah, hated Mordecai and Esther. He hated Mordecai because Mordecai refused to bow. And the same way the enemy hates you uh, and is trying to get you caught up in fear, hallelujah, because, but you got to say, I refuse to bow. Uh, hallelujah. You got to say that in my life, uh, Jesus Christ is king. Uh, he's king of kings. Uh, he's Lord of lords. Uh, he is the great I am. Uh, he is all powerful. He is all magnificent. He is worthy uh, to be praised. Uh, I refuse bow down uh, to my circumstances. Uh, I refuse to bow down uh, to sickness. Uh, come on, does anybody have that testimony on today? Uh, will you refuse to bow down uh, to the threat? Something, Martin Selfman says that we can rewire our brain. Amen. Hallelujah. To be optimistic. Amen. He said the first thing we have to uh, facts for fiction. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, y'all. And we I think that uh, even though it, it, that was a secular report from a, uh, uh, someone who was doing research, think about it. We can rewire our thinking about what's going on in our lives and what's going on in the land uh, by separating facts from fiction. Come on. Hallelujah. By looking at that thing. Uh, hallelujah. He said, look at it false. Uh, 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 I said, let every man be a liar, huh? but let God be true. Huh? Come on, in the name of Jesus. Uh, I said, we separate truth from, from what's false. Uh, hallelujah. I separate the report of the Lord from the report of the devil. Come on. I separate what God says uh, from what man says. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, if God says no weapon for the issue prosper. There's no weapon formed against you can prosper. In the name of Jesus. If you say the Psalm 91, uh, don't be afraid of the pestilence. Uh, no pain shall come near your dwelling. Uh, then you can stand on the word of the Lord. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, if God says, uh, if you're covered by the blood, uh, then death will pass over your house. Uh, then you got to separate uh, Fiction. Uh, whose report uh, will you believe? Uh, I'm going to believe uh, the report of the Lord. Somebody 
The Bible says that everything that can't be shaken will be shaken. That's the word. But when you're positioned for impact, that doesn't move you. Ha! Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. See, see, see. When you're positioned for impact, it doesn't move you that they close down your job. It doesn't move you that there's no food on the shelves in the supermarket. I want to ask you, how many of you can go into your pantry right now and find a whole lot of food? <laughs> it's not what you want to eat, but you're going to eat, come on somebody, in the name of Jesus. You ain't going to starve. God said man does not eat by bread alone. Some of us need to go on a fast even now. But we, we live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. God is our provider. He is our, our my God, Jehovah Jireh. Come on, somebody. He's the same God that made water come out of a rock as he led the people in the wilderness. He's the same God that made manna fall down from heaven. They took those little wafers. They crushed them up and made fresh bread. Come on, somebody. In the name of Jesus, he had 12 fall down from the sky. I'm telling you, we serve a mighty God. When the prophet now hungry, he sent them to the house of the widow and had the widow feed the prophet. He had the raven feed the prophet. God can do what he wants to do. There's nothing too hard for God. There's nothing impossible for God. Our God is able. Yes, he's able. The devil told me in the wilderness. Praise God. If you be the son of God, turn these rocks into bread. Jesus said, uh uh, devil. I don't have to prove myself to you. I don't, I don't have to do that. But I could. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Jesus can do whatever he wants to do. All we have to do is trust in the Lord. Be of good courage. Put your trust back in God. Put your trust back in God. Hallelujah. Come on, put those hands together and give God some praise. Write it down and see if it's true or false. Amen. He also said, step two, that we have to consciously think positive thoughts. Now, 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 now that, that, does that sound like Philippians 4 and 4 that says, whatsoever things are good, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are praiseworthy, whatsoever things are of a good report. Uh, on these things. Come on, church. I'm talking to the Ecclesia. I'm talking to the called out ones. I'm talking to those who are positioned for impact. Amen. Got to impact this world. Come on. We are positioned for impact. When you go on the job, you are positioned for impact. When you go to church, you are positioned for impact. When you go on Facebook, you are positioned for impact. Come on. Hallelujah. So, so, so Esther, now Esther's in the king's house. They refuse to bow. Somebody say, I refuse to bow. I refuse to bow. Now Esther's in the king's house. She's in the king's house. She, 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 she's the queen. She hasn't revealed yet that she's a Jew. How many people do we have uh, that's sitting up in comfortable places uh, and have not revealed that you are a son of the king, uh, that you are a daughter of God, uh, that you are a Christian, uh, that you are a Christ one? I don't know about you, but when I worked in corporate America, it was very uncomfortable for me let people know that I was Christian. Amen. Hallelujah. Because people got, got uncomfortable around me. Anybody ever been there where, where people find out you're a believer, they get Get uncomfortable around you, they start acting funny, and I didn't want that to happen, so I tried to hide my identity. Come on, do I have one witness that, that has ever been there that has ever, ever had that experience? I would try to hide my life. Come on, I would try to hide, and, 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 and what God was uh, even beginning to show me then is that you can't put a lamp under a bushel, amen. Hallelujah. Uh, I had to get to the point where, 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 where. I had to, uh, I was hiding my identity like Esther was.
was in a comfortable place. She was hiding her identi identity, and I had to get to the point where I had to be comfortable with my level of uncomfortability, because when God has called you for impact, you're going to have some moments where you are uncomfortable. Amen. Hallelujah. You're going to have some moments, hallelujah, where it feels like you're on the outside looking in, because people are not going to understand uh, why you won't bow, uh, why you won't watch what they watch, uh, why you won't drink what they drink, uh, why you hold the higher standard. Uh, hallelujah. But it's times like this uh, that your stance in Christ is going to make a difference. It's times like this when people are looking at you and they're saying, what you going to do? You're a Christian now. Are you going to talk like me? You going to act like me? Are you scared like me? See, so the world is trying to see how deep is your faith. Amen. They're trying to see, are you really a, a warrior? Amen. Hallelujah. And Mordecai had to tell Esther. Esther was like, wait a minute, Mordecai. I'm the queen. I, I, I live in a royal palace. Uh, I got servants. Uh, I'm quite about it. Hey, maybe you're in the kingdom for such a time as this. Uh, maybe you're in the kingdom to make an impact. Uh, maybe you're in the kingdom. Hallelujah. Because uh, uh, God knew and he didn't say in the book of Esther they say nothing about God. But he said maybe you're in the impact because God put you here. Maybe you're in the kingdom because God put you here. God chose Esther out of all the virgins to be queen. And God has favored us. And he's put us in position, amen, so that we can make an impact. You were born for impact. I don't like the offer that you were born again for impact. God sent you here on assignment. There's an assignment over your life. That's why you have such a hard time fitting in. That's why there's been so much warfare over your life. That's why you've been already been to hell and back. Because you were born for impact. And the devil hates you. See, see, there's a mountain that God has assigned to you. There's a mountain which your name on. Oh my God. It might be the religious mountain. You may be called to serve the church. It may be the entertainment mountain. Well, God will use you to make music, uh, to touch CDs. Uh, it may be the educational mountain. Uh, well, God will use you uh, to be a teacher. Uh, it may be the entertainment. I said entertainment. Uh, it may be the government mountain. Uh, well, God will let you be president, uh, or mayor, uh, or councilor, uh, or councilman. Uh, For impact, it may be the family mountain where God has called you to make an impact on your family. Come on, somebody. God knows what he's doing. There's so many mountains out there, and God wants to use you. What is your mountain? What is your purpose? What is your mandate? What is your passion? What does God put on the inside of you? What's on the inside of you? What's going to come out? Don't be distracted. In this season, you ain't going to die. You shall live and not die. And declare the glory of the Lord. You can't die. And 
purpose. In the middle of it. That's why we praise God. In the middle of it. Esther, you can't get comfortable. Esther thought about that thing. Just like I'm trickling. I'm talking to the baby in your womb. I'm talking to your purpose today. I'm talking to that thing on the inside of you that keeps you getting out the bed in the morning. Hallelujah. That thing that God wired on the inside of you. We rewire our brains as Christians by, by no longer being conformed to the things in this world, but being transformed by the renewing of our minds. I'm being transformed. I don't think like I used to think. Paul said when I was a child, I thought like a child. I acted like a child. But when I became a man, I put childish things away. Does anybody have that testimony today? That when you were a child, uh, you thought like a child. You acted like a child. You responded to bad news like a child. But now that you are full grown, uh, now that you are more mature, you have put childish things away. Who am I talking to? Or today, I wish I had somebody that said, I'm more growing up. Uh, I might not be where I need to be. Uh, but I thank God. For impact. Come on and praise God if you're positioned for impact. Come on and praise Him if you know you're here to make a difference. Come on and praise God if you're not going to stop. So Esther went into action. She said, okay, I'm up. Uh, let's go fast. Let's go fast. And what she was saying was, let's fast and pray. Because in the Old Testament, fasting was always accompanied by prayer. So she was like, let's fast and pray. And they went and they fasted, and God gave them directive. The Bible tells us that in all of our getting, to get what? Wisdom. Amen. To get wisdom. Amen. Not just the world's wisdom, my God. But we need God's wisdom. Hallelujah. Get wisdom and then make sure that you get some understanding. Amen, understand what's really going on. You have a real devil and it's not a virus. Come on, church. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, what God has for you is for you. Come on. Hallelujah. Nobody can stop your blessing. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. We exercise safety. Safety. Yes, uh, I've been washing my hands. Uh, yes, uh, I'm not, if I'm sick, I'm not going around people. Yes, uh, I, I, uh, if I touch something, I, I know that I have to exercise hygiene, uh, excellent hygiene. Uh, I have to stay away, hallelujah, from certain people, places, and things. Uh, I understand that. But more than that, uh, I know that I need to get into the presence of God. More than that, I know I need to fast and pray. This time comes out, but not by, by fasting and by praying. I know that I need Jesus to help me to make and navigate my way through this trial. Come on, somebody. In the name of Jesus, I say, God, I brought you out of some stuff. Put your mind on rewind. God, I brought you out of some stuff in the past. I want you to think about the God that you serve. Uh, you serve a faithful God. I say we serve a faithful God. Uh, if he brought you out of that, uh, he'll bring you out of this. Uh, I wish somebody would put their mind on rewrite. Uh, and think about where you used to be. Uh, think about how you used to be. Uh, think about how you were a wretch. Uh, think about how you were all messed up. Uh, think about how you were turning up. Uh, Think about when you didn't know how you were going to pay your bills. Think about when 
again. Let me tell you something. God says, I'm faithful to complete the work. <laughs> I'm faithful to complete the work that I started in you. He said, I know the plans I have for you. Come on, personalize. Plans to what? Prosper you. And not to harm you. Amen. To give you a hope and what? A future. A future, y'all. Oh, I say, God said, I'm giving you a hope and a future. In the name of Jesus, God said in Ephesians that I prepared good works in advance for you to do. I'm separating fact from fiction, y'all. I prepared good works in advance for you to do. Uh, so if your work's not done yet, you ain't got nothing to be scared of. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. God said, I have not given you a spirit of fear. See, that spirit of fear comes to immobilize the saints. It comes to immobilize it. It comes to freeze up our minds. It comes to, 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 to destroy the anointing. Oh my God, it comes to stop the oil from flowing. Because you have to be anointed. Whether you're preaching the gospel or whether you're being a witness on your job. Uh, just by having the integrity. You see, anointing is not just for preaching. Somebody got to say, I'm anointed. Uh, you got to know you're anointed. Amen. Hallelujah. Anointing is not just for preaching. Anointing is for me to go, go to college and, and pass these classes. Come on, somebody. Anointing is for me to go to work uh, and, and not steal uh, uh, from the job. Uh, anointing is for me, hallelujah, to be in a relationship and let, make this person treat me like I deserve to be treated. That's anointing for everything. Amen. We need anointing. Hallelujah to live this life. Anointing is for me not to be scared even in the face of fear. I'm not going to be afraid because I'm anointed. Come on and praise God if you're anointed. Come on and give the Lord. I'm almost finished. The Bible says that Esther put on her royal apparel and went before the king. And the king extended favor to her. Church, when we go before the king, we get favor. When we go before the Lord in prayer, he extends the royal scepter to us. Come on, somebody. That's why prayer is so important because you need favor on your life. Amen. Not just ordinary favor that everybody gets from being saved, but I want an extraordinary favor. Come on, somebody. I want some extra favor on my life. Amen. So she got favor, and he said, Esther, tell me what you want up to half the kingdom. But let's check this out, Jay. The more Esther went to the king, the more favor she got. Because it got to the point where he didn't say up to half the kingdom. He just said, Esther, tell me what you want, and I'll give it to you. Come on, somebody. You got to read Esther. Read it all. It's 10 chapters. Read it all the way through. He said, Esther, tell me what you want, and I'll give it to you. Amen. Hallelujah. But she put on her royal apparel, and then in chapter 8, we see that Mordecai also got dressed. Church, we got to get dressed. Amen. Hallelujah. We got to get dressed. The Bible says that we, I'm not talking about putting on a suit. God ain't up in all, all of that. He don't care about the, what you put on to come to church. Amen. Hallelujah.
breastplate of righteousness, the prayer shirt, waist of truth, hallelujah, the belt of truth, hallelujah. You got your feet shot, feet shot with the gospel, the readiness, the goal is bread, the gospel of peace. Hallelujah. Do you have your shield of faith? Hallelujah. Do you have your sword in your hand and you're ready to fight? Come on. To cut down all of the words that the enemy will send your way. The sword is the word of God. Are you yielding your sword? Are you fighting with the word church in the name of Jesus? Do you have the full arm of God? You got to get dressed. They have to get dressed. So the end of the story is that he put on his royal apparel that the king wrote it in it, that the Jews were the Jews were under threat. They were getting ready to be destroyed. The whole nation of Jews was getting ready to be killed. The king had approved it. Amen. There was a threat. Amen. Hallelujah. But the Jews didn't freeze up. They got a, they got an action plan. Amen. How this is our blueprint, church. The Bible is our blueprint on how we're supposed to act. They went into action. They fasted. They prayed. They put on them. They remembered who they were. Come on. Hallelujah. They went and they took risks. Come on. Hallelujah. They, 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 they began to say, God, what can we do? They, they went to their prayer and God gave them the plan. Hallelujah. And then it got to the point where she said, reverse this. She asked the king for the impossible. Knowing that it couldn't be reversed. That's right. How many of our mouths have been shut up because we're believing that there's no hope? Mm. For whatever the situation is, a lot of us are facing a lot more than some virus. Come on, somebody. That may never touch us. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. We're going against a lot more. Hallelujah. There's a virus. There's some stuff trying to destroy you right now. That if you stay, if you get distracted, you out. There's some stuff trying to make you go back to old behavior. There's some stuff trying to make you turn from God. There's some stuff trying to make you give up on your dreams. Give up on what God put in your heart to do. We ain't got time. Ain't nobody got time for that. I, I handle it. I give it to God. And it's him. Come on, somebody. And give God some praise. Hallelujah. Oh.
He turned it around. The, the Bible says in chapter 9 of Esther that the very thing that was supposed to destroy the Jews didn't work. It won't work, church. Whatever's been sent to destroy you, it won't work. Hallelujah. Whatever's been sent to take you off of your game, it won't work. You don't been through enough. You try to come out. Hallelujah. And, uh, and, 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 and God will say, there's some stuff from last year. And I'm going to say this thing right here. I'm going to close. They, they, they started calling this virus COVID-19, which is an abbreviation, you know, COVID-19. But what I think about, I'm like, what's the 19 for? What's the 19 for, church? 2019. There's some stuff from last year that's trying to follow us into this year. Amen. And still the word that's been prophesied over our lives. That thing is trying to cancel out what God's doing today. It's, it's in the past, church. Oh, y'all got to hear God. I know, I know. It looks like. I know what it feels like. I know what's in front of me. But my perspective is this thing is already behind me. Come on, somebody. In the name of Jesus. I already got the victory. Come on. God already spoke the word for 2020. I'm not going back to 2019 and receiving a bad report. Come on, somebody. In the name of Jesus. I cancel out anything that was bad. Why am I praying? I know I should be 
want to praise God. for such a time as this. She was a woman. That was during the time when women couldn't have nothing to say. Amen. You got a mountain. And what has been trying to destroy you has been trying to keep you from conquering your mountain. But I declare the decree today that you shall take and overcome your mountain. That you are positioned for impact. Amen. Hallelujah. The altar is open. Hallelujah. Pastor, just pray for me. I'm not going to lay hands. I, I want to pray for you, though. I want you to press your way to the altar. I want to pray for you. Amen. Hallelujah. 